Welcome back to Screen Scan. Today, I'll take you on a captivating journey as we dive into the details of the gripping 2006 film, The Departed. Get ready to unravel the story, dissect the characters, and relive the emotions. Buckle up as we embark on this captivating recap. Let's begin. <laughs> In a voiceover, Frank Costello, played by Jack Nicholson, an Irish-American mobster, expresses his desire not to merely be shaped by his surroundings, but rather to shape them to his advantage. Grainy archival footage portrays tumultuous riots in Boston from past eras. Costello, staunchly proud of his Irish heritage and unapologetically prejudiced, articulates his frustration with African Americans, attributing it to what he perceives as their failure to grasp the necessity of seizing opportunities rather than waiting for handouts. According to Costello, the key to success lies in taking decisive action to claim what one desires. In a cramped convenience store, Costello gathers protection payments from the visibly intimidated shop owner. He cautions the owner to come up with more money next visit. Turning to the owner's adolescent daughter staffing the counter, Costello casually inquires about her menstrual cycle. His demeanor is indifferent yet menacing, amplifying the tension. Despite feeling offended, the daughter is simultaneously drawn to and repelled by Costello's imposing presence, reluctantly responding to his rhetorical query. The shop owner remains stoic, revealing no emotion. In the corner of the store, a young boy, a fledgling Colin Sullivan, portrayed by Connor Donovan, observes Costello's exchange with the shop owner. Costello catches sight of him and inquires if he is the offspring of an acquaintance. In a gesture both calculated and generous, Costello instructs the owner to provide the boy with two brimming bags of groceries and slips some coins into his palm. He advises the boy to remember that as he grows older, he can always seek financial assistance from Costello. As Sullivan matures, Costello takes him under his wing and guides him toward a position within law enforcement, enabling him to provide valuable intelligence. Following his graduation from the police academy, Sullivan is promptly assigned to the Massachusetts State Police, joining the ranks of the Special Investigations Unit overseen by Ellerby, portrayed by Alec Baldwin, dedicated to combating organized crime, with Costello as their primary focus. Sullivan, played by Matt Damon, is greeted warmly by Captain Queenan, Sheen, and Staff Sergeant Dignam, Wahlberg, upon his entry into the state police force. Billy Costigan, played by DiCaprio, hailing from a family deeply entrenched in organized crime, also attends the police academy. However, before completing his training, he is summoned to a meeting with Queenan and Dignam, where they subject him to intimidation, bullying, and verbal harassment. They assert that he's too astute to fit in as a cop and cite his familial connections to crime. When Costigan confronts their mistreatment, they alter their approach, offering him a unique proposition become a police officer under the condition that he withdraw from the academy, serve a substantial prison sentence on a fabricated assault charge, and infiltrate Costello's criminal syndicate. Only Queenan and Dignam will be privy to Costigan's undercover status. They entice him with the promise of a bonus upon successful completion of the mission. Upon his release from prison, Costigan reaches out to his cousin in an attempt to organize a drug transaction. Meeting at a neighborhood bar, Costigan orders a cranberry juice, drawing a mocking comment from the man seated beside him. Angered, Costigan retaliates by smashing a beer mug over the man's head, only to be restrained by Mr. French, played by Ray Winstone. Mr. French cautions Costigan, reminding him of certain individuals he is prohibited from assaulting, and implies that the man at the bar is not one of them sparing Costigan further trouble. Eating at the counter of a store similar to the one where Sullivan originally met Costello, Costigan confronts two Italian mobsters from Providence who are extorting protection money from the store owner. He beats the two men severely, breaking his hand in the process. Costello becomes aware of Costigan's actions and calls him to a meeting. There, he offers protection from the mafia, assuring Costigan that they will return with reinforcements to kill him. Inviting Costigan into a back room, Costello instructs Mr. French, a senior member of his crew, to check for weapons or a wire. Despite having his cast broken open by Mr. French and enduring a beating from Costello, Costigan proves his loyalty and is accepted as a legitimate crook by Costello. Both Sullivan and Costigan gain credibility within their respective organizations. Sullivan visits a crime scene where the two mafia men from Providence are discovered. He then contacts Costello, who instructs him to divert the investigator's attention away from Costello. Meanwhile, Sullivan begins dating psychiatrist Madeline Madden, played by Vera Farmiga. 
Costigan also encounters her, but only as a client, as required by the terms of his probation. Despite this professional relationship, Costigan develops an attraction to her. During a deal involving stolen missile guidance microchips and Chinese government agents, Sullivan tips off Costello about a police operation. As a result, everyone manages to evade police detection by boarding boats waiting at the rear of the warehouse. It becomes evident to both Sullivan and Costigan that there is a mole within their respective organizations, although their identities remain elusive. Costigan confides in Dignam and contemplates leaving, but Dignam advises him to gather evidence to unmask the mole. Despite his agitation, Costigan agrees. Later, he shares coffee with Madden, who reveals her plans to move in with Sullivan. Costello instructs Sullivan to uncover the rat within his crew. Sullivan, in turn, requests social security numbers and other forms of identification from his crew members to aid in tracking down the informant. Meanwhile, Costigan diligently investigates and discovers from a fellow member of Costello's crew that Costello himself is an FBI informant. This revelation explains why federal prosecutors have repeatedly failed to indict or arrest Costello. Later, Costigan pays a late-night visit to Queenan at his home and reveals the shocking truth. Costello is the mole working for the FBI. Mr. French gathers everyone's social security numbers and other identification details. Costigan notices a misspelling of citizens on the envelope containing their information, which Fitzgibbons, played by David O'Hara, had written. After correcting the error, Costigan departs. Later, he visits Madden at her apartment, where she is in the process of moving out. Madden reveals that she is moving in with Sullivan. The two of them engage in conversation and then share an intimate moment. Ellerby assigns Sullivan to lead the investigation aimed at uncovering the mole within the Special Investigations Unit, citing his immaculate record. Meanwhile, Costigan tails Costello to a porn theater, where he witnesses Costello meeting with a mysterious figure. Unbeknownst to him, this figure is Sullivan. During their encounter, Costello hands over an envelope containing personal information about his crew members. In pursuit, Costigan chases Sullivan through the emergency exit of the theater and into Chinatown, but neither man manages to reveal the other's true identity. Sullivan instructs Costello to follow Queenan to a meeting with Costigan. Costigan manages to escape just before Costello's men throw Queenan off the roof, with Queenan landing at Costigan's feet. As Costello's crew departs, Costigan joins them, pretending he has just arrived to participate in the assassination. During the chaos, Delahint, played by Mark Ralston, is gravely wounded. Later, back at their bar, Delahint identifies Costigan as the mole, but unfortunately dies before he can reveal this crucial information to anyone else. A subsequent news report exposes Delahint as an undercover cop, leading to Dignam's forced resignation from the police force. Using Queenan's phone, Sullivan contacts Costigan but fails to persuade him to abandon his role as a mole. Sullivan discovers from Queenan's diary that Costello was an informant for the Federal Bureau of Investigation, FBI. Concerned that his own identity as a mole for Costello might be exposed, Sullivan takes action. With Costigan's assistance, the police track Costello to a cocaine pickup, resulting in a fierce gunfight between his crew and law enforcement. Most of Costello's associates are killed during the confrontation. In the aftermath, Sullivan confronts the wounded Costello, who confesses to being an occasional FBI informant. Sullivan ultimately shoots him multiple times. The next day, Sullivan is hailed as a hero by everyone on the force for eliminating Costello. In an act of good faith, Costigan visits Sullivan, hoping to have his civilian identity reinstated and collect his back pay. He informs Sullivan of his intention to return to civilian life. While Sullivan steps away to check Costigan's employee record, Costigan notices an envelope from Costello on Sullivan's desk. It suddenly dawns on him that Sullivan is the mole working for Costello. As Sullivan returns to his desk, he realizes that Costigan has uncovered his true identity. In a desperate move, Sullivan erases Costigan's employee records from the police computer system. Madeline informs Sullivan that she's pregnant but keeps the identity of the father a secret. A few days later, she receives a package addressed to Sullivan from Costigan. Curious, she opens it and discovers a CD containing recorded conversations between Costello and Sullivan. Just as she listens to the incriminating content, Sullivan walks in, attempting to downplay her suspicions. Desperate to protect himself, Sullivan contacts Costigan, who reveals that Costello meticulously recorded every conversation they had. These recordings were left with Costello's attorney, who has now handed them over to Costigan. In a high-stakes negotiation, Costigan demands his civilian identity back or threatens to expose Sullivan. The two agree to meet on the rooftop of the same building where Queenan met his tragic end.
hand. When they meet, Costigan catches Sullivan off guard and swiftly handcuffs him. As part of his secret arrangement, Officer Brown, played by Anderson, unexpectedly appears on the rooftop as well. Brown is visibly shocked to witness Sullivan in handcuffs, held at gunpoint by Costigan. Reacting instinctively, Brown draws his own weapon and aims it at Costigan. In a tense moment, Costigan explains his actions by revealing that Sullivan is the mole they've been hunting. Curiously, Costigan questions Brown about why Dignam didn't accompany him, but Brown remains tight-lipped. Determined, Costigan leads Sullivan toward the elevator, while Brown chooses to take the stairs, following them closely. As the elevator reaches the ground floor and the doors slide open, Officer Berrigan, played by Dale, unexpectedly shoots Costigan in the head. Brown arrives shortly afterward, only to meet the same fate at Berrigan's hands. In a chilling revelation, Berrigan informs Sullivan that Costello had more than one mole within the police force, and that Costello was planning to expose both of them to the FBI. Seizing an opportunity, Sullivan swiftly turns the tables by shooting Berrigan in the head when the latter momentarily looks away. Later, at police headquarters, Sullivan weaves a carefully crafted narrative to safeguard himself. He falsely identifies Berrigan as the mole and even recommends Costigan for the prestigious Medal of Merit. At Costigan's funeral, Sullivan and Madeline stand solemnly by the grave. Despite Sullivan's attempts to engage her in conversation, Madeline pointedly ignores him. Later, as Sullivan enters his apartment, he is confronted by Dignam, who swiftly shoots and kills him. The scene transitions, and the camera pans upward to reveal the gold dome of the Massachusetts State House against the backdrop. In a symbolic twist, a rat scurries along the balcony railing, underscoring the pervasive corruption that has plagued their world. For more insights and breakdowns of intriguing films like this, don't forget to subscribe, turn on notifications, and leave a like to support the channel. Thank you for watching.